Today I have the Huion Canvas Pro 24. Now this is the largest pen display Huion has ever made. We're going to go over it in just a second. The quick unboxing starts with a screwdriver to attach your stand, a VGA cable for video, a USB-A cable for data, HDMI for video, the AC power cord and brick, four VESA mount screws to attach the stand, a microfiber cloth, instructions, and smudge guard glove. The aforementioned Huion standard issue stand. You're going to use those four included screws to attach the stand. It couldn't be simpler. You lift that hattie notch at the top of the stand, and you can see you have a multitude of different positions. As always, you're not going to get it totally flat, why would you? But you're going to get a lot of wobble if you try to do that. My opinion is you're going to get the best experience mounting this to an Ergotron type arm. But that is going to let you bring that display closer to you, allowing you to have a better pen experience. And your nice piece of kit. We will talk about the pen and the pen holder in just a minute, right after we pay some bills. Now I'm John, and I just spent a whole night sliding down chimneys to give that other guy a break. When I'm not doing that, I do reviews and tutorials on things used in the creative process. Now remember who you're supposed to be by clicking that bell, clicking a sub, dropping a like, dropping a comment, so you won't miss anything. This is a pen display 23.8 inches. It needs a computer to attach to, meaning it's not an all-in-one. The digitizer is electromagnetic resonance EMR for short, in my opinion, the best pen experience technology today. The resolution is QHD, that's right, QHD 2560 by 1440p. Panel type is IPS. It's got 16.7 million displayable colors, a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, a color gamut of 120% sRGB. It's got 10 shortcut keys on each side for left or right hand in use, along with the configurable slider for brush size and zooming in and etc. Now what's the big deal about this QHD resolution? This marks the first time a Huion pen display has exceeded the 1080p standard. What does that mean? It means it's a lot more clear and there's a lot more pixels to work with. Here's some math and a visualization for you cosmonauts out there. PPI stands for pixels per inch, means the more pixels you pack into the display, the sharper the image is going to appear. That's why your phone or tablet looks so sharp. Also means when you zoom in, it's not going to be all pixelated. Display this size of 1080p is approximately 92.56 pixels per inch. You move it up to QHD in the same size display, it's going to be 109.08 pixels per inch. That is a big difference. Additionally, this display features anti-glare etch glass. So while it does a good job blocking out that glare, it also has etch glass to feature more of a pencil-like experience. While I wouldn't quite call it pencil-like, it's a heck of a lot better than drawn on glass or a plain matte screen protector. There's some texture to it. Finally, it's fully laminated. What does that mean? Simply put, it's a bonding process, lessening the distance between the pen tip and the digitizer, mitigating a negative experience we call parallax. Parallax is a cursor offset from the pen tip caused by aforementioned gap. In short, it drives us crazy. So how did my parallax test turn out? As you can see, pretty good, especially for a 24 inch display. Now Huion advertises this as almost no parallax, and I agree with them. It's not zero, but you're not gonna get zero because that's just physics, folks. You've got glass in the middle of the digitizer and the LCD screen and the pen tip. But anyway, with this laminated screen, it's a non-issue. Let's talk about Huion's newest pen, the PW517, which is battery free, has 8,192 pressure levels and tilt as supported at 60 degrees. Finally, the pen has a 266 PPS report rate that should help on those fast strokes. The big deal about this Pentech 3.0 technology is they have shortened the nib and made it more stable. We'll test to see if this translates into a better pen experience. The donut pen holder should be familiar. You crack open the top and you got 10 replacement nibs in there along with a nib remover. The pen itself, no eraser on the back, two programmable buttons on the barrel, which has a rubberized grip. The pen tip, no give to this guy, so it's not gonna feel all squishy against the glass. If you've used a Huion pen before, you'll be right at home. It's the same familiar round barrel at the top that tapers shortly as you move towards the back. The pen feels good. It's nice and light and doesn't slip all over the place thanks to that rubberized grip. Pen can go into the holder two ways, both in the donut hole vertically or across the holder itself. 
Now I've got great news, everybody. I know this is a little bit off the cuff and out of the scope of this review, but I have finally decided to move out of my parents' basement. Now, I know what you're saying, everybody. John, let's calm down. You're only in your 40s, but it's like I tell my kids, sooner or later, one day, you have to stand on your own two feet. No, I didn't do my laundry yet. God, what is this, a federal penitentiary? Chocolate or vanilla? I'll do it. Your connections and setup couldn't be easier. You have your USB-A, your power, and three video in options, VGA, HDMI, and DisplayPort. While I know some people are going to wish for a USB-C single cable solution, the bottom line is you'd still have to plug in power anyway. I am glad they included DisplayPort because most GPUs on workstations now have about three of them. So it'll free up the one HDMI port for something else. Up at the top, you have power along with the usual suspects for control and display options. Brightness, contrast, that kind of thing. Power up is quick and no, I did not notice a lot of heat using this display in long sessions. Okay, ruler line tests. We all love them. Well, I don't really love them, but you guys love them. I did a number of different line tests in Photoshop with the line stabilization off on a dead pixel brush. As you can see, there is a little bit of wobble in these lines. It's not perfect. Did it diminish my drawing experience? No, no it didn't. We've got Sketchbook Pro open. We're doing our initial uh, wavy line tests. Again, what we're looking for is a nice gradient between a light stroke, a medium stroke, and a hard stroke. And then at the end, we want to see a nice taper off. Once again, using the pencil tool, I am not disappointed. So we will move on to the pen tool. Now, what we're trying to see here with these long, thick, thin strokes is we want to make sure we have a smooth taper off without any kind of shoelace effect or any kind of artifacts. And again, smooth as silk, we taper off nice to a clean, smooth point. And even using the pen, we could see some gradient as my stroke lightens up in the end. Now, I've explained the MR lag before where the cursor lags behind the pen tip. Again, can't do anything about that. That's just the nature of the technology. But what you want to make sure is that there's no lag in the lines. So we do these short, quick hatch lines just to make sure that the pen can keep up with those fast strokes. I'm moving around the screen to make sure I don't see a difference in any kind of different part. And again, even when we get smaller here to these small strokes, I'm not having any kind of problem with pen accuracy. Once I see that, I'm ready to move on to these circles. And that's a similar test, whereas I'm just really testing the pressure of the pen along more of a curve where I know there's going to be some thick to thin changes by nature of the shape and the pressure that I'm applying to do more of an ellipse type stroke. The results are the same here. Clean taper off line with some gradient at the end. Finally, we're going to do this again with the pen tool, combining a little of that wavy line stroke and taper at the end. And I'm pretty satisfied by what I'm seeing. We don't have any more whipped cream. I mean, honestly, this must be what prison feels like. Just want to talk really quickly about the driver. The driver gave me no issues, no crashing. It's fully featured. Your pen pressure stuff is there. You got individual application profiles. It's basically the same Huion driver I reviewed a million times. I'll link up at the top where I go into those application user profiles, but I didn't want to waste a lot of time showing the driver. The only time other than those application profiles that I'm going in there is if I have dual displays and I've got to tell the driver which one I'm drawing on. So I'm using a friend and brush. It's a tilt pencil. Do my tilt tests here and I'm looking for a couple things. Obviously I'm making sure we're getting good registration. Right, you can see as I tilt the pen, I'm getting a good, nice shade. And I'm looking a little bit for accuracy. In other words, we've had a problem in the past where we've had some pen cursor issues when we're using tilt, meaning the cursor starts jumping a little bit away from the pen tip. And as I've used the display and tested it here, I'm really not really seeing a lot of it. I know some of you guys are going to say, yeah, there's some, but when you're using a pen, I don't know how you guys even notice it. I don't. Now, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times in these reviews. We are living in a glorious age if you're a digital artist. The fact that you can get a 24 inch pen display with QHD resolution in this day and age is unbelievable. Now the USB-C cable we talked about, that would be nice, 
But for me, in a workstation type setup, it's just not that important as still in 2020, most GPUs do not have a USB-C in. Therefore, you're relying on the USB-C input of whatever onboard garbage GPU your workstation has. Now laptop users, especially MacBooks, I understand you want one cable solution. So I know in the comments I'm gonna get it already. John, which one should I get? The Canvas 16, this one or that one, or the 24 inch? Well, it depends. If you need the real estate, if you're a person who likes just a ton of menus on the screen and everything, you can't put a price on real estate. What you really have to do when you're deciding on the purchase is start with your budget. How much money do you have to spend? My own personal preference is you buy the largest pen display you can afford, especially in a workstation setup. What do I mean by workstation setup? It means you're not going to be moving around. Obviously, if you're going to be moving around, you're looking at the 16 inch displays and lower. In the 24 inch space, there's only three options. But at this price point, this is the only one with the laminated display, the Pentec 3 technology, and the etched screen. Now, as I always do, is there room for improvement? Yeah, I guess. I mean, every one of these pen displays I seem to be reviewing has the same kind of little slight amount of wobble in the slow diagonal ruler test. So I've said it before and I say it again. For me, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's more the symptom of the grid-like nature of EMR technology, meaning it's all a bunch of little grids on that digitizer. That's how it tracks the pen tip. So when you add tilt to it, I just think it's a maturity issue as opposed to something's wrong. Now for full transparency, I did tweak the pressure sensitivity of the pen because I thought the line was registering a little too dark when I was pressing light. And Windows has had a full feature update since that time. I did give that feedback back to Huyan. Again, it's not a big deal to me because it's not a hardware issue. I just tweaked the pressure. Now, to be honest, I feel like I'm nitpicking a little bit here because you have to balance the review somewhat. But the takeaway is, this is a really, really good pen display. Put it this way, if I would have told you guys even three years ago that you could get a 24 inch pen display that's EMR with tilt, with minimal parallax at this size, at this price, you guys would have signed up for it in a minute. Those kids at Huion did a really good job. If you're in the market for a 24 inch pen display and you've only got three options, you really have to give this a look. You know who else did a really good job? You guys, for watching to the end of this video. If you want to see more reviews by Huion, check out these fellas over here and I'll see you guys in the next one.